Hi, it's Andrew Clark, the Logistics Optimizer. I'm going to do a reaction video to this amazing bit of uh, new warehouse automation technology uh, using robots in the warehouse. Just saw it yesterday, had to do it. Uh, this brings some interesting uh, new key technology to the market. It would be a competitor to the auto store system. Uh, it's by Hypeak, it's called the Hypeak Climb. Let's have a look at it. I'm gonna do some pause and commentary along the way and let's have a look. All right, lots of lovely smoke. And there it is. What is this thing? I think climb, simplified efficiency. Okay. Right. So straight out of the bat, what, what this is, is one of those, it's like an AMR, only with some special qualities. All right, so here you've got very high density racking, similar to what you think you might see in the auto store, but with one significant difference, which we're about to see. There's all the totes. So this is a tote bin, it's not pallets, it's a tote bin thing. So this is designed for high volume e-commerce order picking with a massive skew range. Obviously this is this particular video. And this is an animation, right? So this is obviously not a real uh, um, installation of this product. But you can see we have just this enormous uh, rack face of tote bins. And a little robot comes up and then it climbs up the racks. They've built tracks into the racks and then it goes up and, uh, and then it picks up the tote bin, which it doesn't really show in this animation. Uh, but now you can see how you've got a little AMR down the bottom and then a scissor action lift. All right, so that it can uh, climb up the racks on the rails that are built into the uprights on the outside of the uprights of the racks. And then it can go and pick uh, a tub. So straight away, the difference between this and auto store is that auto store is one solid three dimensional block of, uh, of tote bins and the tote bins are stacked on top of each other. So you don't have any selectivity. The robots are gonna run around the top of the, uh, the auto store juggling, you know, 19 to the dozen um, juggling totes around in order to pick uh, pick the different totes. So if the tote isn't on top with auto store, it's got to move a few totes out of the way before it gets down to the the nth tote down the uh, the stack of totes that it's picking. Here you've got full selectivity over the face of a rack. So straight out of the box, I this makes me think less robots are going to be required because you're not doing all those uh, those double handling movements that the auto store is doing. Um, and so let's see what it does next. All right, comes down to the bottom. And what's it doing? What's it doing? Ah, ah, we've got a goods to the man picking station, right? So same thing as auto store, same thing with, with all of these tote based uh, automation systems. They, they uh, even the Amazon robotics, the old Kiva robotics system doing exactly the same thing. It's goods to person um, at a pick station. And uh, in Amazon, you get like a whole stillage, a rack frame of products brought to the operator and then you can do pick multiple things from that rack frame or just one thing. Here it's one toad at a time, but by queuing up the robots, it can present just one toad at a time to the uh, the picker who uh, will get a bit of a look in a minute, right? So he is uh, going to picking from the workstation and putting to the orders on the tote bins on a rack to his left and possibly his right as well. He might be doing two sides. So he's multi-order picking from these racks. And of course, all of these movements are going to be controlled by the, the, uh, the control system of the, uh, of the automation. And then here's his station, right? So he is going to pick a box out. There may be only one product in there. There may be multiple products. Usually you would have dividers if you're going to do that. And he will pick out of that and then he'll scan it and he'll have some sort of a instruction screen on his left. And then it has to go and put that tote away back into the racks. So, uh, and obviously, you know, as they're saying here, this, this is kind of infinitely scalable with as many robots as you need. It's still very high density storage, although not as dense as the auto store. 
but I'm not sure how high the auto store will go, but this looks to me like it will go higher. This goes 12 meters high. Um, I'm not sure that auto store would work beyond a certain stack height of, of the tubs. I think the efficiency would, would, would die. Uh, whereas here you can go the full 12 meter height of the racks that it will allow, which is very high. Most warehouses are not 12 meters high unless you build a specific installation. So uh, full selectivity, still very high storage density if you use the height. Uh, that looks like a winning strategy to me. And I think cost wise, well, I don't know how this work out cost wise uh, versus an auto store. You'd have to find that out. But it certainly looks to me like a, like a very viable competitor. The other thing you'll notice, so the these little robots, I will see it, I think, in a little bit. Uh, lots of robots. And so it shows them going into the aisles, but you may have noticed in the pictures, let's, well, we'll get to that in a second. Self-charging, of course, so all robots do that. Now, put a little wide off, it's pretty narrow aisle. 12 meters high. Right, right. Now, what this is showing here, you'll see you've got robots not only in the aisles, but also crossing the aisles, because the hole underneath of the racks is actually lifted, and we've got the robots. Um, so you don't have blockages within the aisles is what that means is you can have any number of robots going in all acting independently and then they can all dodge each other. They're never going to queue up within this space. See here you see them, right? See this one crossing here? Um, this one crossing right here is crossing across the aisles to get to the next aisle that it's got to pick from. And I think that's basically the end. So that that is that is very cool. That's a really cool system. Uh, it's from High Peak, um, and uh, uh, and this would definitely be something that I would, if I was looking at Auto Store, I would also definitely be looking at this. And particularly if I had a greenfield site and I was looking for an automation system, and I'm, and I'm in e-commerce because this is an e-commerce play, right? Really, this is an e-commerce play. If you're doing bulky goods and pallets and carton picking, this is not for you. Um, but if you're high volume, small order e-commerce picking, this is, and you want automation, you need to be doing very high volume for uh, for picking these systems. And ideally you want to be like running this thing a couple of shifts a day if you want to get the maximum utilization out of it. So it is very cool. Okay. Well, I hope you found that uh, interesting. If you didn't know about Hypic and you were looking around for automation, this, this is definitely be on my radar to, uh, to have a look at. And uh, I'm going to do more of these, I think, because uh, automation is, uh, is, is getting big. Uh, I usually work with smaller warehouses. This is, this is like out of the price range. If you've got like, you know, a few people in your warehouse and you're shipping a couple of hundred orders a day, this is for people who are shipping, you know, thousands and thousands of orders a day. Uh, this is not for the uh, this is not for the small medium enterprise. This is for the large enterprise, um, high volume e-commerce. So, but anyway, it just goes to show you how people continue to innovate and uh, and think about how to solve the the, the massive problem of e-commerce. Anyway, that's, that's all from me. So I'll see you in the next one.